Welcome back to another free Windows 7 video for the 7680 exam. This video looks at managing hard disks in Windows 7. Let's start from the beginning and look at what happens when you put a brand new hard disk into Windows 7. Once a new hard disk has been installed in a Windows 7 computer, it must first be initialized. The process of initializing the hard disk creates a boot record and partition table. This information tells the BIOS the layout of the hard disk and where to find software to boot the operating system. When Windows 7 initializes the hard disk, you will be asked what type of partition table that you want to create. The first type is MBR. MBR, or Master Boot Record, dates back to the MS-DOS days and thus is great for backward compatibility. Like most technologies back in those days, it was based on the hardware available at the time, and thus there are some limitations when it is used with modern hardware. First, there is a limit of 2 terabytes usable space on the hard disk. With hard disks larger than 2 terabytes on the market, you will not be able to access any of the space after the 2 terabytes using MBR. With MBR, you can create up to 4 primary partitions. A partition in simple terms is an area of hard disk that has been divided up. Once a partition is created, it is usually assigned to a volume and assigned a drive letter. Using primary partitions, you could have four drive letters per hard disk. To increase this number of assignable letters, a hard disk can have one of these primary partitions changed to an extended partition. Inside the extended partition, you can create logical partitions taking the total number of partitions an MBR disk can have up to 26. The next type of partition is GPT. GPT, or GUID Partition Table, supports 128 primary partitions per hard disk. Why would you need that many? I don't know. But if you do, it supports it. The big advantage with GPT partition tables is that it supports hard disks over 2 terabytes. The disadvantage of GPT is that older operating systems may not support it. The support of GPT varies from operating system to operating system. Windows 7 and Vista 64-bit editions can read and write to GPT as well as boot from them. Newer 32-bit operating systems can only use GPT hard disks as a data drive. Booting is not supported. When deciding which partition table to use, I would personally select MBR where possible because with MBR it will work on every operating system. If you have a hard disk that is close to 2 terabytes or greater, I would select GPT. Some software, such as backup software, can have problems with hard disks that are close to the 2 terabyte limit and using MBR. Windows 7 allows you to convert MBR to GPT and vice versa. Having said that, in order to do this, you need to remove all volumes and partitions from the hard disk. This means all the data on the hard disk will be lost. Now that you understand the basics of how hard disks work in Windows 7, I will now change to my Windows 7 computer to demonstrate how to use disk management. To access disk management, you can open Computer Management from the Control Panel, or right-click your computer in Windows Explorer and select Manage. Instead of doing this, I'm going to run diskmgmt.msc from the Start menu. This will launch the Disk Management tool using all the screen real estate for disk management. If I open Computer Management to access the Disk Management tool, some of the real estate is lost to other display options. Once I open Disk Management, Windows 7 will detect that there is a new hard disk that has been installed in this computer. When a new hard disk is installed, Windows will ask you to initialize the disk. Notice at the bottom I have the option to select Master Boot Record or MBR. Under this, you have the option to use GUID Partition Table or GPT. In this case, the hard disk is only 128 gigabytes, so I will select MBR. 
If I right-click the hard drive, I have the option to convert the hard disk to a GPT hard disk. This option is available as there are no partitions on the hard disk. Under this notice, I have the option to make the drive offline. You would most likely use this option if you want to remove the hard disk from the computer. Now that the hard disk is initialized, I can right-click the unallocated space on the drive and select the option New Simple Volume to start the volume wizard. The first question you will get asked is how much of the free space you want to use in this partition. In this case, I will accept the default and allocate all the space on the hard disk to the one partition. On the next screen of the wizard, you will get asked if you want to assign a drive letter to the partition. If you wish, you can also mount the partition to an existing folder. For example, if I select Browse, I can create a new folder on the C drive and mount this partition under that folder. This will mean that any files or folders that I put under this folder will be put onto this hard disk. The last option will not assign a drive letter to the hard disk. If I select this option, that hard disk will still appear in disk management and you can always assign a drive letter to it later or assign it to a folder. On the screen you can decide which format you want to format the hard disk with. The options will be NTFS and EXFAT. FAT is a very old system that gives you the most compatibility. It dates back to Windows 98 days. Nowadays FAT is generally used only on flash drives. FAT does not have security and does not support additional options such as compression and encryption. The next option allows you to assign the block size used for the format. Large block sizes are more efficient, but you will lose space if you store a lot of small files. Unless you have a really good reason, I would just leave it on the default setting. Next, you can set the drive label. Notice under this the option Perform a Quick Format is ticked by default. I would leave this option ticked. If you untick this option, Windows will perform a slow format, which will take a very long time to complete. If you think that the hard disk may have bad sectors, then I would not perform a quick format. Performing the slow format will check all the sectors on the drive and identify any bad sectors. I can now finish the wizard and the volume will be created and formatted. Once the volume has finished formatting, I can right click it and get additional options. At the top, I can select the option Mark Partition as Active. When a computer boots, the BIOS will look for an active partition. The active partition contains bootstrap code that is used to boot the computer. Only one partition on the computer needs to be active at one time. When Windows 7 is installed, the setup program will automatically make one of the partitions an active partition. In most cases, you should never need to select this option. The next option allows you to change the drive letter and path. If you have already assigned a drive letter to a hard disk, you can change it by selecting this option. Under this, you have the option to format. Below this, you have the option to shrink a volume. If I select this option, I can enter in a new size for the volume. Windows will only be able to shrink the volume based on how much free space is at the end of the hard disk. For this example, I have reduced the volume by 50%. If you find that you have lots of free space, but you cannot shrink the volume as much as you thought, right-click the volume and select Properties. In the Properties area, select the tab Tools. From here, select the option Defragment Now. This will move all the free space to the end of the hard disk so you can shrink the volume. If I right-click the drive, Notice the option Convert to GPT Disk is grayed out. This is because there is a partition on the hard disk. If I delete the partition, notice that if I right click the hard disk, that this time I can select the option Convert to GPT Disk. The process does not take long to complete. If you decide that you want to go back to MBR, you can always right click the drive and select 
convert to MBR Disk. Everything that you can do in the Disk Management GUI tool, you can also do from the command line. This is done with the utility Disk Part. To run Disk Part, open a command prompt from the Start menu. Notice that I did not start the command prompt with administrator rights. When I run Disk Part, notice that Windows 7 will prompt me to run the software as an administrator and then will open a new window with Disk Part running. The first command that I'm going to look at with Disk Part is the List command. In this case, I will use the Disk option to list all the hard disks on this system. I could also use the option for list partitions, volumes, or virtual disks. Before you can start performing any actions on a hard disk, it needs to be selected using the SELECT command. This sets the focus for all the commands to follow. Once again, you have the same options, being able to select a disk, partition, volume, or virtual disk. By using the list disk command, I was able to find out that the hard disk that I want to work with is number 2. To select this hard disk, all I need to do is run SELECT DISK 2. Now that I have selected the disk, I can create a partition using the command CREATE PARTITION PRIMARY. If you wanted to create an extended or logical partition, you could also do this here as well. You only need to worry about extended and logical partitions when using MBR, and you require more than four partitions on a single hard disk. If you don't need more than four partitions on an MBR hard disk, then I would always only create primary partitions. Once I have created the partition, I can see the partition using the list command. Notice the asterisk on the far left hand side. This indicates that this partition is selected. If you wanted to select this partition or another partition, use the command SELECT PARTITION and the number. Notice that partitions start their numbering from 1, while hard disks start their numbering from 0. If you want to remove everything from the hard disk, you can use the CLEAN command. Be careful with this command, because as you can see, Windows did not give you any warnings before the command ran. Once complete, all data on the hard disk is lost. Currently, this hard disk is an MBR hard disk and has no partitions on it since I ran the clean command. If I want to convert it to a GPT hard disk, I can run the command convert GPT. All the commands from the GUI can be run in disk part. In most cases, you will use the GUI as it is easier. In some cases, you may want to use disk part, for example, if you need to script commands. In the next video, I will look at dynamic disks and RAID. If you've enjoyed this video, please feel free to visit our webpage or YouTube channel for more free videos for Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 R2. Thanks for watching.